Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bore him no children. Now so many of the faithful people we meet in the Bible had this problem, that they couldn't have children. And yet God had promised that he would work through their children. And so it was all a test for them, so that they would believe in God. And in those days, for women not to have children was really awful, and people thought that that was because God was against them. And yet God was for them. So it just shows how God turns everything around. And that's his way. That's his style. Now, she had a handmaid, that's a, a girl servant, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Sarai so said to Abraham, see now, Yahweh has restrained me from bearing. So she recognized that this was God, not demons or some big monster up in the sky called Satan. She realized, like Job did, that we receive both good and evil from the hand of God. So please go into my handmaid. It may be that I will obtain children by her. So she's saying to Abraham, why don't you just have children by my girl servant? And then they could sort of be counted as my children. Abraham listened to the voice of Sarai. Sounds a bit like Adam listening to the voice of Eve. Because this wasn't really right. Him and Sarai should have had faith that God really would fulfill his promise rather than trying to fulfill it by a man going off and having children by another woman. That's not really what God wanted at all. Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her female servant, her handmaid, after Abraham had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to Abraham, her husband, to be his wife. He went into Hagar, and she conceived. When she saw that she'd conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Sarai so said to Abraham, This wrong is you I gave my handmaid to you. And when she saw that she'd conceived, that is, that she was pregnant, I was despised in her eyes. May the Lord judge between me and you. Now that seems so unfair to say that. Ah, oh, this is all your fault. Now Abraham could have said, but whose idea was it in the first place? It was your idea in the first place. And you see also how this kind of thing just doesn't really work out. Because if we don't go God's way, which is that a man should marry his wife and have children by her, and if God holds you back from having children, well, that is his hand, and we are to work with that in faith. But going off and having children by another woman sort of in the name of your wife, even though it was her idea, this sort of thing was clearly not blessed by God. And now, Sarai says to Abraham, it's all your fault, may God judge you for it. Well, Abraham said to Sarai, behold, your maid is in your hand, to her whatever is good in your eyes. Well, I don't know whether that was right or wrong. He was good I think in that he didn't say to her what I think we all would have done. No, it's not my fault. It's your fault. It was your idea. He just humbles himself in this in this sense. But then to just tell Sarai to do whatever she wants with this, this girl is also not right. Because Sarai dealt harshly with the girl, and the girl had to run away from her. And the angel of God found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, Sarai's handmaid, where did you come from? Where are you going? She said, I'm fleeing from the face of my mistress Sarai. The angel of Yahweh said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hands. The angel of Yahweh said to her, I will greatly multiply your seed, but they will not be numbered for multitude. The angel of Yahweh said to her, Behold, you are with child and will bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because Yahweh has heard your affliction. So this girl was not a believer, and yet God listened, as it were, to her situation, her affliction, her problems, as if it was a prayer to him. And God sees all the injustice on the face of the whole earth, even amongst those who are not believers. So how much he knows is just huge. And how he is patiently tolerant of the whole world just letting the whole thing go on is amazing but of course soon he will send Jesus to bring justice
And so the angel goes on talking about Ishmael. He will be like a wild donkey among men. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. He will live opposite all of his brothers. She called the name of Yahweh who spoke to her, You, God, see me. For she said, Have I even stayed alive after seeing him? Therefore the well was called Beer Lachairoi. Behold, it is between Kadad. Hagar bore a son for Abram. Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Well, I think the summary takeaway point from that chapter is, do things God's way. And if you don't do things God's way, then it won't work out.